Happy New Year, everyone. New Year's Day is so exciting. I mean, I got my kids to stay up way too late last night. The three months, I'm never gonna know what year to write on my checks, and often we look ahead to the new year with like anticipation and willpower for changes and resolutions that this year, this time, things are gonna be different. And that's why I wanted to connect with you today in this online format and remind you of the goodness of our God. No matter what change you need, what regrets you have, what goals you're looking forward to, our God's mercy is sufficient for you. The Bible tells us that God's loving kindness is steadfast, everlasting, unchanging, and timeless. He is slow to anger, rich in love. He remembers to the 10,000th generation those who fear him. His love is historic and ceaseless and gracious, and he is with us always, even to the end of the age. You know, but there's also a sense in which God's grace is fresh and it's new and it's sufficient for each day's need. I love that about our God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he's also just exactly what we need right when we need it. And it seems like New Year's Day is a time when we can appreciate these aspects of God's fresh and new and timeless grace more than usual. Now, of course, New Year's Day, it's not a Christian holiday, but it does mark the changing of the year and the turning of the calendar. It can be time for a fresh start, or it can be marked with retrospection, like a look back at how things have been, or introspection, a look into our hearts to see how we're feeling. You know, the prophet Jeremiah got an opportunity to do this in his life at several pivotal moments. And in the Bible, the book of Lamentations records his retrospection and introspection about the tragedy and extreme grief that he faced at the destruction of his city, Jerusalem. Now, of course, just turning the calendar to 2023 isn't the same as the cataclysmic destruction of a city, but I do think we can learn a few things from Jeremiah as he looked back at the mistakes that he had made, that his people had made, but the grace that God showed him in the midst of it. Let's look at Lamentations chapter three, and we'll start in verse 19. He says this, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them. My soul is downcast within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the great love of the Lord, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. It is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, and therefore I will wait for him. And I especially love verse 23 there, that God's mercy is new every morning and great is his faithfulness. You know, that word new there doesn't mean something novel or never before seen. And in fact, I think of it more like something renewed or refreshed or reborn. God's mercy for Jeremiah in this time wasn't something he had never seen or experienced before, but instead it was the right kind of grace at the right kind of time. The same kind of grace God has always given and always will give. You know, I've been thinking about that tension in the context of our own discipleship and where we are all at here at Element Church. What kind of renewed or fresh or timely grace do we need in this time for this moment? How can we see God's transcendent and eternal and unchanging grace in the right kind of way for this right kind of season? How can we get a renewed mercy every morning from the faithfulness of our great God? In other words, some of us are asking ourselves about a fresh vision for the year and where the Lord might be leading us in 2023. Well, if that's what's on your heart, I wanna share a few things that I think the Lord might be leading us to in this next year. I think it's a mixture of the fresh and new grace for today, but still in concert with the e-changing, unternal grace of God. You know, put another way, I think it's really about what this mission and vision of our church has been for 15 years now, to help people experience life to the fullest, connect into meaningful relationships, and make a lasting impact. It's almost like three different legs, so to speak, of our vision finding life, connecting into relationships, and making an impact. And so this new year, I would love for you to prayerfully consider how to take a next step towards Jesus Christ in each area of our church's vision. And so firstly, I'd love to challenge you to find life in Jesus Christ. Find life in Him. And so this year, that challenge might be best phrased as, how can you grow deeper in your relationship with Christ this year? You know, for some of us, maybe that's saying yes to him for the very first time. If that's you and the Lord has been knocking on the door to your heart in this past year, I can't think of any better way to greet 2023 than by receiving Jesus' new life given by grace through faith in him. I promise you, you won't regret saying yes to him. 
Now, for those of us, though, that have already said yes to following Jesus, there's a way that we can put that yes into practice by making space and time to be with Jesus Christ. You know, I'm almost surprised that it's taken me this long today to say the R word, you know, resolutions. You know what I'm talking about. New Year's resolutions are these promises we make to ourselves each and every year that will change our behavior, we will have more willpower, we will do better, we will work harder, and so on and so forth. And it's tempting to make a resolution to follow Jesus in the same way, to grit our teeth and put our willpower in it and work harder and do better and think that our growth and our finding of life in Jesus Christ really is up to us. But I think finding life in Christ and growing roots in Jesus Christ and bearing fruit as his disciples That's a work and a growth that's up to Jesus and not to us. We simply have to put ourselves into spaces where he can affect us day by day, week by week, and year by year. So it's not about a flawless devotional record or or the guilt that you can feel when you start failing your new quiet time rhythm. It's about finding fresh and new mercy each day as we spend time with our Lord. And so I wanna challenge you. Find a way to put yourself into relationship with God each and every single day this year. Might look different for all of us, but there are some basic building blocks that you can put into practice. For most of us, I think that looks like daily prayer, daily Bible reading, and daily service. You know, there's lots of plans available online, and I encourage you to find a tool that works and stick with it. In fact, if this is something you've had trouble with historically or would like some partnership in, we'll even be hosting some seminars this spring designed to help you have a life-giving, vibrant relationship with God every single day. So stay tuned for those. You won't want to miss those. But my prayer for you today as you step into finding life in Jesus Christ this year is that as you do, you would not find something tired or old hat, but that you would find something that makes you feel like Jeremiah did in Lamentations 3. Not bowed down with the guilt and weighed down with the cares of this world, but like Jeremiah did in verse 23, finding the Lord's mercy fresh and new every single morning. And so may our Lord renew his great mercy for you each and every day this year. The second area I wanna challenge you in is to connect into meaningful relationships. In other words, how can you belong to the body of Christ, his church, this year? You know, next week, we're gonna start our series in Ephesians that we're calling Never Alone. I'm looking forward to walking through this amazing letter of Paul's with each of you. And maybe the main reason that I'm excited is that Paul's letter centers around our transformed relationship with Christ and how therefore we can also be changed and transformed in our relationships with one another. We're never alone in Jesus Christ. And so my prayer for our church is that we will be a group of people, a body of believers that is increasingly transformed by the love of Christ and fully devoted to one another in love, in service, in kindness, and in generosity. I would love Element to be known in the way that Jesus challenges us to be known in John 13, 35, which says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. And so my challenge to be transformed and unified and devoted in love is really a challenge to show up, to be known, to make space for others to be known. It's more than just attending church on Sunday when convenient and participating when it's easy and fun. And it's certainly more than just doing tasks for the church. It's much more deep and much more important than that. It's the work of reconciliation that Jesus started on the cross and continues to work out in each one of us day by day. And so I look forward to continuing to unpack these truths with you over the next five weeks in Ephesians. But today, as we turn the page on our calendars, I wanna challenge you to step into some of these areas of belonging and meaningful relationship that we have here at Element Church. We've designed these for you to experience these types of relationships that push one another towards Jesus Christ. You know, of course, our hallmark ministry for this is our small groups. We're just about to launch our spring season, and that means there's no better time to find a group and jump in. You know, groups are just people who have agreed to meet together consistently, to pray for one another, encourage one another, be there for one another in times of need, to study the Bible and the teachings of Jesus together. They meet at all different times through the week and in all different places, sometimes up here at the church or in different homes or even in coffee shops or places around town. You can find one that works for you and jump in at any time. But if you need help connecting, please reach out. We would love to help you find a great fit in the kingdom. Another way to create meaningful relationships is to find someone particular to invest in. Some people call this a mentoring relationship. Others might call it one-on-one discipling. Some others call it finding your Timothy because that's what the apostle Paul found as a young Timothy to pour himself into. But whatever you call it, I'm just talking about a one-on-one relationship where you can try to steward forward some of the wisdom you've attained over the years. 
Now, you don't need to be a fully formed expert. You just need to find someone who you might be one step ahead of in one area and try to help them get to where you are today. You know, if there's somebody that's coming into your mind as I'm talking about this, be bold and, and reach out and see how the Lord might use you in their life to grow them. And the third way you might find meaning and relationships is by joining a volunteer team here at Element Church. Whether it's in First Impressions or eKids or our student ministries or our production team or, or somewhere else, if you step into volunteering, you're gonna find yourself a part of an amazing group of people who loves Jesus, who loves this church, and who will love you as well. If you've been thinking about jumping in deeper, now is the time. Cross the line, get into the game. You'll be glad that you did. And so the third area I wanna challenge you on here today as we welcome 2023 is to make an impact. I'd love to ask it this way. Who are you bringing the kingdom of God to this year? You know, I think most often at Element Church, we think of impact as something that maybe our outreach team accomplishes, or maybe your impact is in inviting people to church or contributing financially. And all of that is true. And I'm so grateful for your generous and lasting impact in these areas. But today I wanna challenge you to make a particular impact in the life of someone you know. Who are you bringing the kingdom to this year? Who's in your mind, in your heart, that you're praying for to come to know Jesus? Who is in your workplace or your family or your neighborhood that needs to know him? Who is just waiting for Jesus to make an impact in their life, just like he's made in your life? Whoever just came into your head as I was asking that question, that's your one this year. That's the one that Jesus is calling you to make an impact by sharing the love of God, by showering them with service, by faithfully interceding for them in prayer. You know, just like spiritual growth, helping someone say yes to Jesus is ultimately the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that you can force. It's not something that you can control. But we can control how we pray for people. We can control how much we serve people. We can control how much we love people. And we can trust that doing these things will make a lasting impact in their life. You know, Jesus taught his disciples in the book of Matthew that they should let their light shine before men, that people might see their good deeds and give glory to their Father in heaven. And so let me ask you, who are you letting your light shine out to this year? Let's not let 23 go by without making a lasting impact in their life. So are you ready for the fresh and new mercy that is 2023? Are you ready to find life in Christ? Are you ready to connect into meaningful relationships more than ever before? And are you ready to pursue one person that God has put into your heart and make a lasting impact in their life in this world and in the world to come? No matter what you do, remember, it is God's mercy that is fresh and new every morning. Let's rest in the truth of his unchanging goodness shown to us year after year. Will you pray with me as we welcome this new year? And so Lord Jesus, we come to you and we thank you that you have given us new life, the same type of life you've been giving to people throughout centuries, even in Jeremiah's time. God, those of us who are bowed down by the cares and worries of this world, may we like Jeremiah today find a fresh and a new mercy. God, as we look towards following you this next year, may we put our hope not in our own strength or in our new plans or in our resolutions, but our hope squarely and firmly in you and in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to bear fruit in this life and in the life to come. Lord God, we put ourselves in your hands. We are grateful for you. We're grateful for our church. We're grateful for our city. We're grateful for our families. You give us everything and we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Element Church, thank you so much for joining me today. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon.